Hello, I'm Georgie and I'm an artist. What is my background? I was born and raised in Liverpool with an Irish Catholic background. I went to a place called St Julie's, which was an all-girls Catholic high school run by habit-wearing, crucifix-clutching, angry nuns. Um, I know it sounds a lot of fun, but I wouldn't recommend it for the old creative growth. How did this impact me? I don't think it did at all, to be honest. I left the place completely impartial, although slightly perplexed by the religion and the nun culture, which I'll talk about more another day. As a shy child, I only really began to blossom as an artist when I got to art college. I just listened to Closer to My Dreams when I found my tribe, so to speak, teachers included. It felt so novel and reassuring to be treated like an adult and to be totally encouraged by the staff with my ideas. I absolutely loved my college life. It was there that I found so many choices and career paths that I could go with. It was so exciting. I initially became a successful illustrator with my own global stationery company along with my brother Rob who looked after the business side of things. From there I studied and worked in textile design at a couple of different commercial um, companies. Um, both practices I absolutely loved and found really enjoyable. It was just happy days. In stark contrast to my high school, my home life and family growing up was loud and chaotic. There was always parties, impromptu and planned, and our house was always filled with my parents' friends having noisy get-togethers. I'd say they were amongst the first true kitchen disco pioneers, Prince and Shaka Khan on full blast. I also have a big outer family with artists and creatives on both sides. A lot of them have made great um, careers out of their talents and I'm really proud of all of them. Craft. Craft was, all, was also a fairly standard pursuit in and around my family. Quilt making, wreath making, objet d'art with the paper mache. Not to mention my grand's handmade skunks which were made from walnut shells and pipe cleaners. Don't ask. It was all commonplace and what my Auntie Mary didn't know about a glue gun was no one's business. There was always a production line on the go around our kitchen table with chit chat gossip and banter oiling, oiling the cogs. And possibly um, a bacon bushy. <laughs> um, so my childhood memories and adolescence really are those of the ones of family parties where music, food, humour and style were a production in themselves. Like the threads had to be lit and a cheap shoe was social suicide. At these gatherings there'd always be a drunken relative imparting their wisdom onto me. Be yourself as everyone else was taken. Or keep some space in your heart for the unimaginable. Um, but mostly I was told I should realise my gifts and use them. There was a lot of love in those walls and so many wild and wonderful characters. So I guess if you're asking me how my upbringing impacted how I see the world, then I would have to say I believe that art and the good nature of people can change the world. I refuse to believe the opposite. And I think now really we need that more than ever. Um, I was given an, an invaluable feeling of self-worth and an embedded idea that I could do it all. What more can you arm a child with? I feel like I had a really vibrant start in life and it wasn't until I left Liverpool for work that I learnt that the place that had raised me with all its wit and enthusiasm was hated and vilified the country over. I was subjected to bullying, humiliation, name-calling and bigotry. Um, at a fairly young age and it impacted me more than I'd like to admit. It's now well documented in the media and the national press are officially guilty so thankfully today's Scouse kids won't really ex experience any of that. Well at least I hope they don't anyway. Liverpool is Mrs Popular again and looking more breathtakingly gorgeous than ever. So moving on, what are my biggest influences? Wow there's lots but let's start with the basics. Nature obviously. It's just a never-ending font of abundance and beauty. <laughs> um, Music, obviously. My kids' art, because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And they're always so frank and refreshingly unapologetic with their drawings. Um, Colour, and by which I mean loud, bright, zesty, just so lively and refreshing colours. Um, I'm also partial to a good famous artist quote. Um... I feel like there is nothing more truly artistic than to love people. That's what Vincent van Gogh said, and I think it's one of my faves. Um, I also love the romance of science. I'm watching 
that footage that you see online of, you know, the, the lone brain cell reaching out for connection or serotonin cells getting carried along. Um, it's just also just beautiful, really. Um, makes me cry. Oh, can I just add Catholic religious iconography for obvious reasons? It's just the pastels with the gold look so amazing. <laughs> um, not that I'm shallow. So more broadly, I mean, I'm influenced massively by fashion. I honestly think that fashion designers are true mavericks and modern day artists in their own right. My fashion heroes are Karl Lagerfeld, John Galliano, Alexandra McQueen, Tinker Hatfield, but isn't officially a fashion designer, but it's Tinker Hatfield. And then the Queen herself, um, Vivian Westwood. Uh, but more recently, Virgil Abloh, the productions and the narratives they create are as moving and as beautiful as any ballet I've ever seen. Virgil shows being among some of my favourites. They were just pure theatre. His use of vibrant colours and humour that decorated the cut and the luxury of the garments just gave me no choice but to just be taken. And the fact that you can watch, well, you could watch them all live on Instagram was just an absolute gift. Um, <clears throat> and then Kendrick Lamar, who I absolutely love as well, did a life-affirming tribute to Virgil at the Spring Summer 23 Louis Vuitton shows last year in San Diego, which will just stay with me forever. Again, pure art. Um, I hate to be predictable, but another great influence for me is just people and people watching. I need to tap into the cafe culture every so often and get a fix. Um, <clears throat> I need to see what people are wearing and what they're drinking. Sometimes I'll just spot someone beautiful with their eyes sitting there on their face, exposing all their hopes and heartaches. Um, I think the way a person holds themselves, the, the way the beads are just sitting there so proudly from the neck of their shirt, I don't know, something just ignites me. And I think a person's hands can show me a whole lifetime too. Um, I can't help but be moved by it all. I think, to be honest... Um, I just, I need a muse. <laughs> um, people and their energy can stay with me a long time and keep me motivated to be better and do better. You may forget what a person said, but you will, but you will never forget how they made you feel. It's something al along those lines that the great Mayor Angelou said. Um, and finally, influential female artists to me are as follows. Tracy Emin, Paula Rago, Frida Kahlo, Marina Abramovich, and not forgetting my own gorgeous female artist friends. Um, the biggest challenge of being an artist, for me, really, is it's never been having ideas, because that's not the problem. The challenge has always been having the discipline to keep with one idea and develop it properly. I'm like a kid in a sweet shop, wanting to try all sorts of styles and wanting to execute my ideas. I'm all over the place. Um, as you can probably see from the work I've produced over the last couple of years, <laughs> there's a bit of everything in there. Um, so I suppose I'm probably completely lacking in any sort of structure and I need a bit of discipline. So this year, that is what I'm going to do. Um, the advice I'd give my younger self is really just to have as much fun as humanly possible and to be kind to people. Like, kindness is just so underestimated really in today's world um but also don't worry so much uh, i use all sorts of mediums and materials for experimentation and i have done over the years um but have to admit nothing fills me with excitement like a clean white sheet of pressed watercolor paper with it all its endless possibilities and eventualities just hanging there do i listen to music when i paint um, yes, I have to. I think it really helps with focus and energy levels. I listen to podcasts too, but it's mostly me, either with tears rolling down my cheeks or me throwing shapes, depending on the playlist that day. I love lots of different genres of music, including hip-hop, jazz, soul, R&B, Motown, classical, pop. I'll listen to anything, really. Um, I firmly believe it's music that holds a place at, at the top of the art ladder. Everything else comes second. <clears throat> Art is how you decorate a place and music is how you decorate time. That's what someone said. Nothing will take you back to a place like music. Um, I've had 
many compliments and people showing love for my work, but I think the best reaction is for someone to put my work up on a wall in their own home. I mean, it's quite a commitment really, isn't it? I find doing commissions gives me a lot of job satisfaction too, as it's somebody's conscious effort um, to own a piece of my work, which I am just so grateful for always. And I think as well, once you draw someone's face or you, you draw a person, I think they just stay with you forever. What do I hope people take away from my work? I honestly don't expect people to take much away from my paintings, really, but um, maybe just a little freeze on a joy and the idea that love is all you need.